Amen, Kathy. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. It is good to be together. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. To those of you joining us online today, um, you are in the capable hands of a substitute today. Um, our normal uh, um, uh, live stream technician is uh, homesick, imagine that, along with many others. So um, welcome to you online as well. This morning I would invite you to make sure that you look at your bulletin. There is a lot going on. Um, I'm not going to run through it all. You are totally capable of reading all of that for yourself. A couple of things that didn't make the bulletin. I see there's a lost and found table down in the lobby. Um, I don't know that there's anything of great value, but if you lost something and, and you would like to take it home with you, make sure you check. It's on the little card table in the corner. Also, uh, you may have noticed uh, the long line of tables with cards on them. Uh, this is the Sunday that we all get a little writer's cramp and sign our name to all of the cards. And those go out to um, those that are... Um, <clears throat> Um, a part of our church family but can't make it here in person or have moved a, a distance away and so we send out a Christmas greeting to them each year. Also in the lobby and behind in the um, Sunday school wing there are two Christmas trees with some tags on them. Um, I didn't look. Are there some left back here? There's two left back here and I don't know there's a couple left back here. Uh, those those are for our Christmas families. I see that uh, some gifts are already showing up. Um, if you're capable, and you're, or excuse me, if you're able uh, to take one of those tags, bring them back next Sunday, uh, unwrapped, but make sure you bring the tag with it and attach it to the gift so that we can get it to the, because there's two separate families, um, and then they will be delivered to those families. One um, adjustment to the um, order of service, our bucket isn't feeling good today and couldn't make it, so our bucket will make it next Sunday, um, and um, we will have our bucket time next Sunday. Will you join me in the call to worship as found in the bulletin in the order of service? We read it responsively. Get ready. The time of hope and peace is at hand. We are called to action rather than reaction. Let us open our hearts to God's word and his will. Help us to be workers for God rather than observers. Come, draw near to God in the faith. Let us prepare our hearts to receive his gifts. Amen. This morning, we join the angels who sang on high. Kathy, would you lead us as we rise together? Hymn number 152.
would invite you to have a seat this morning. Part of our Advent tradition is that we light the Advent candles. And down through the years, we've had uh, confirmation students and their families uh, do that task for us. Uh, this morning, graciously, Ronan has agreed to do it for us with his grandmother. Will you come this morning? Today we light two candles. The first candle is called Hope, and it is a reminder that God's promises are true. The second candle is called Peace, God's gentle, loving peace for our lives. We seek God's peace in times of stress. Come, all is ready. Let the light of these candles called Hope and Peace bring brightness to your spirits. Join me in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we so easily get ourselves caught up in the stuff, the stuff of life, the stuff of the season, the preparations for parties and social events and programs and but we forget the true preparation is the readiness of our hearts to receive you. Help us look again at our lives and turn them around so that they may be in tune with you and your will. Lord, we join our voices as a way to join our hearts before you. And we lift before you our confession of faith. Lord of mercy and peace, open our hearts to receive your words of hope. Far too often we live in darkness and fear. We have let fears invade the center of our lives and find ourselves changing, moving from your light to the darkness of this world. It seems this world is more pleased to fight and destroy than to have peace and harmony. We become part of that when we live in anger, resentment, apathy, and greed. Forgive us, merciful God. Help us look at the ways we have failed to be your people. Give us courage and strength to change our lives so your peace may become a reality in this world right now, today. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, the darkness of this world seems to creep in so easily and so quickly and so deeply. But the good news is God is with us. Let us turn our lives over to his light this morning.
before you are seated, I would invite you to welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you, greeting one another in peace this morning as Christ has welcomed you with peace. Greet each other. Today's reading is Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 through 10. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear, will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge of, and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness will sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lay down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lay down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, the young children will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. Wonderful are the gifts of God's grace. Let us respond with wonder and delight by offering ourselves back to him. With reverence and devotion, let us bring our gifts to him, that through our tithes and our offerings, God's promises might be fulfilled. join our voices and our hearts together again by lifting before the Lord our prayer of dedication. Gracious God, you offer us a gift beyond price. Your promised salvation is like the bread of heaven for those who are perishing. In gratitude for your abundant gifts, we commit ourselves to you. May the gifts we bring before you be used for your glory in this world. Amen. Please be seated. I am. Um, how many of you knew 
that there are 700 pipes to our organ. I know, I never would have guessed that. And I was reminded this morning that as awesome as that is, the one who plays them is more awesome. So Kathy, thank you so much. Now she's trying to figure out how she can get me back. <laughs> One other thing that I wanted to point out. Um, how many of you thought that the, our chandeliers were yellow? <laughs> They're not. They're white. And if you'd like to see what they actually look like, you can look in the balcony. Um, and um, they are actually white. And uh, we are in the process of trying to make, and our, our ceiling is actually white. Uh, you didn't know that either, did ya? Um, and we are in the process of creating white in here instead of the yellow. So it's kind of exciting. They are really pretty when they're white. And they're pretty when they're yellow, but um, they're pretty when they're white as well. You know, um, Hallmark likes to think they have cornered the market on the whole heart of Christmas idea. Um, every year, dozens of new movies uh, come out uh, reminding us of their idea of what the heart of Christmas is all about. Christine and I enjoy watching many of them, not all of them, but many of them. Um, uh, some are better than others. But there's something Hallmark has forgotten. The heart of Christmas is not about emotions, no matter how good they feel. The heart of Christmas is not about doing the right thing, no matter how right that is. The heart of Christmas, what makes Christmas Christmas, is right in the Word, Christ. And last week we talked about Christmas as a season of hope. And no matter what we face, no matter what's going on in the world around us, we have this hope that God is with us. And today, we take another a look at another piece of the heart of Christmas, the wonderful offer of peace. The reason for Jesus coming to earth as a human baby is God's deep desire to see us no longer broken, no longer in conflict, but restored and at peace. In God's path to peace, well, it began in an unlikely place among some unlikely characters. And that's where we're going to begin today as well, because the heart of Christmas is peace. The Christmas story begins with an odd group of people. The first announcement of the arrival of a Jesus in Bethlehem was given by angels to a group of shepherds. And I would invite you to turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 2 very familiar passage that we hear read every year at this time. You can find it on page 1593 in the Red Pew Bible, but I would encourage you to follow along. Read the words for yourself as I read them out loud. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. 
This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Shepherds. Shepherds in first century Israel uh, lived kind of out on the fringe of society. Uh, they were considered uh, smelly, dirty, uh, untrustworthy. They lived out uh, with, uh, for months at a time as they were following their flocks around. And the first readers of the Gospel of Luke I think would have been shocked by God choosing to trust shepherds with the message that the peace of God had come to earth. Think about it. If God asked you to plan the announcement of the birth of his son, the savior of the world, who would you have uh, told first? How would you tell them? I don't know. Facebook post? A twit? Twitter? Tweet? Not a twit. A tweet? I don't know. Maybe you'd have a big party. Some kind of a, a savior reveal party. Right? Something like that. You ever wondered why shepherds? I mean, shepherds, yeah, that's one of the oldest professions in the world. Adam was given dominion over all the animals. He was told to care for them, a shepherd over them. Abel was called a keeper of the sheep. God is described in Psalm 23 as our shepherd. Jesus calls himself the good shepherd in John chapter 10. These shepherds in a field outside of Bethlehem were out there tending their flock. Bethlehem was just a couple of miles outside of Jerusalem, basically a suburb of Jerusalem. And a shepherd there would be guarding their flock at night from predators. The sheep would be gathered kind of in a a little sheepfold. And get this. These sheep were more than likely going to be used as a sacrifice in the temple. It's the most likely reason for sheep to be in this spot at the time of year that this took place. So think about that. There's sheep that are going to be used as sacrifice in the temple. Any bells start going off? The angel came and told the shepherds that the Savior of the world had come, who would be the final sacrifice. So maybe sheep and shepherds was not by accident. In Israel, shepherds were a critical part of the temple worship. But it was a dirty, lonely, low-paying job because of their work. The irony is they were actually prohibited from worshiping at the temple. They weren't even able to testify in court. Shepherds were the most unlikely group of people for an angelic announcement. But God, God has this way of, of lifting up people that others look down on. There was a survey taken that revealed that nearly one-third of the people that answered this survey said that of all the people mentioned in the Christmas story in the Bible, they identified with the shepherds the most. The shepherds were average, ordinary people, and yet they were invited to see the King of Kings. I don't know, I think, I think we identify with the shepherds because we like seeing God kind of burst into the everyday, ordinary life of these guys, and, and we want to see him do that again in our life. 
When God wanted to announce the arrival of God the Son, he did not do it in the presence of kings and queens. He announced it to the poor and the forgotten. And get this, if God's favor and peace was offered to these shepherds, then surely his favor and peace is offered to us. And that's really the world's greatest need right now. From the time sin entered the world and affected all of creation, we have been at odds with God. The Bible says we were enemies of God in rebellion against him. A sin also caused us to be in rebellion with each other. And in fact, kind of in rebellion with ourselves. This is why Jesus' birth was and is so uh, such good news. Because you see, he's the answer. He's the only answer to the brokenness that exists because of sin. Brokenness between ourselves and God, ourselves and other people, and ourselves and our own peace with inside of us. Listen to the way Paul uh, put it when he wrote to the Colossians. Um, Paul was talking about uh, Jesus' role in making peace. And in Colossians 1.19, he says, For God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in him, him being Jesus, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. To understand the peace at the heart of Christmas we have to understand that although Jesus arrived in a cradle, his life would lead to a cross. Jesus, a member of the divine Godhead, the Trinity, lived a sinless life, laid down his life. He gave his life to pay for our sins through his crucifixion. Paul says that it was the blood of a Jesus Christ that makes peace between us and God. Christ's sacrifice on the cross paid for the sin we committed. And it satisfied God's justice. Even more, it opened the door for us to, um, to be rebirthed into something brand new. Being made right with God is the, is the key to experiencing peace in every area of our life. I ran across another poll. It said if you could choose what you want most in life, what would you ask for? And the most common answer was peace. Peace is what the world wants. People want peace in their marriages, in their families, in their workplaces, in their country, uh, in the world. Think about our country, United States of America. We have some of the best medical and some of the best psychological treatment centers in the world. We have some of the highest educational institutions, some of the best worldwide communication abilities, some of the greatest resources in terms of dollars in the world. And yet with all of this, most people in the United States struggle to find peace. And the results are devastating. They're broken marriages, hatred, rebellion, financial anxiety, an unsettled nation where half the nation hates the other half. And the world comes along and offers peace but it's really, well, it's just really forms of escape. Oh, there's the Big East drugs, alcohol. But there's relationships that people shouldn't be in. 
a constant barrage of entertainment, busyness. People look for peace in all kinds of self-satisfaction and, and positive thinking. And, and, and In fact, some people believe peace is defined as the lack of trouble, and so they just avoid trouble and think they're at peace. However it is defined and in whatever form it is offered, the world has never had the answer for true, lasting peace. And it never will. Here's the truth. You and I can choose to be at peace. We can choose to have peace. True peace does not come from anything the world has to offer. It comes from God. This peace means to be in harmony with God, to be bound, joined, woven together with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This peace means to be assured of, confident of, secure in the love and care of God. This peace means to, to be sure that God will provide, that he will guide, strengthen, sustain, encourage, deliver, and save completely those who seek him with all their hearts. This peace only comes from receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And the sad thing is most people reject God's peace because they can't see past the world's false peace. Most people reject God's peace because well, they, they just kind of give in. And they proudly declare their own selfishness, their own desires for the ple pleasures of this world. And yet Jesus said... Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you. True, inner peace is offered to all who know Jesus Christ regardless of circumstances. And if you want peace in the everyday, ordinary parts of your life, if we want to see peace in the people around us, if we want to see peace in our own inner selves, then we really have to be at peace with our eternity, with God. So will you receive the peace of Jesus Christ this morning? He's the giver of eternal life, the Prince of Peace. And when you received this gift of forgiveness, when we take it on, when we say, yes, I will receive the peace of Jesus Christ, when we say that, we become friends with God, and he offers us his power to help us through the difficulties of life. You know, some people think that, you know, being made right with God means we'll never face any problems, but God doesn't promise to take away the potholes in our life. He just simply promises to go through the potholes with us. Peace with God means that we can have peace in a world full of conflict. Peace with God means he is here in our lives. He's with us. There's nothing we should fear. And we can go to him for, for strength and guidance. And we can lean on him when we're tired. And, and we can keep going no matter what in his power and in his strength. And as we get closer to Christmas Day, as we continue to walk through this Advent season. Advent, by the way. Advent comes from the Latin word for arrival. And Jesus' coming was his, the arrival of God's light in the darkness of this world. 
How many of you, well, I'm not going to ask you how many of you have Christmas trees up yet, but when you have your Christmas tree up, whenever that is, for us that's the like day after Thanksgiving, or that weekend anyways, and you turn on the lights, and you shut all the rest of the lights off, right? Isn't it cool to sit there in that glow of the Christmas tree? That's what Jesus did. He came into the darkness of this world, and he, want, he just shines out into the darkness, and we can kind of sit in that glow and experience rest and peace that we can get nowhere else. And in this Advent, we also need to remember that there's another Advent coming, another arrival. One day Jesus will return, and he will make all things right once and for all. His peace covers our past. His peace meets us in the present, and his peace is a promise for the future. And get this. Peace is our reason for existing. It's our purpose as followers of Jesus Christ. The world needs more people who have the peace of God in their hearts and are willing to share that peace with others. Joining God and making this world a better place is the purpose of our lives. We say it every week when we say the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called children of God. The angels told the shepherds peace was available to those on whom God's favor rests, on his people. Jesus said his people would be blessed as peacemakers. When we are willing to go along with others and fight for unity rather than conflict, we are at one with the heart of God and we are being the most godlike we can be. We find peace at the heart of Christmas because God desires us in a right relationship with Him, in a right relationship with the people around us, and in a right relationship with ourselves. It's the very reason Jesus came. Now I know. I know that there are those who do not value peace. They live in a constant state of conflict. You've met them. Some people are just looking for a fight, a reason to complain and cause problems. And it reminds me of what Linus said to Charlie Brown who was having trouble getting into the Christmas spirit and probably one of the greatest Christmas specials of all time, right behind R R Rudolph, right? But Linus looks at Charlie Brown and he says, Charlie Brown, you're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem. For many in our world, conflict is a way of life. Conflict takes over and peace is, is difficult to find. And, and Christmas, Christmas is about the birth of the one who promised us peace instead of conflict. There's an old saying that's been around a long time. Many of you have seen it on billboards or, or bumper stickers, but it, it fits this time of year. No Jesus, N-O. No peace, N-O. No Jesus, K-N-O-W. No peace, K-N-O-W. No Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no Jesus, no peace. 
It really is that simple. And my prayer is this year, this Christmas, will be the time, the year that, that we truly know Jesus, K-N-O-W, and accept, accept the gift of peace offered to us so we might live in peace with God, with others, and with ourselves. And accepting God's peace, well, it begins right at his table. Because it's at his table that we are reminded what Jesus did. That he, that he came as a baby in a manger, but, but this is why he came. This was not an accident. This was not a, whoops, what happened? It is here that we are reminded that on the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to those that were gathered around him, and he said, this is my body given for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to those gathered with him and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it for the remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, we come before you at your table and we ask that you would transform here today. That you would transform these simple elements of bread and cup into the presence of Jesus here. And that you would transform us as we prepare ourselves to, to take part in the bread and the cup and, and you would change our hearts and you would change our souls and you would give us the courage to say yes to the peace you offer through the blood and through the body given for us. Hold us as your own, Lord. Renew us as your people. And transform us with your love. Give us your peace. As the servers come forward, I would invite you to hold your portion until all have been served so that we might eat and drink together.
we eat together. together. We join our hearts again and lift before the throne room of a grace the prayer the Lord gave us. Our Father who art in heaven. Gentle Mary laid her child lowly in a manger. There he lay the undefiled to the world a stranger. 
The question for each of us this morning is, is he still a stranger? Or is he your friend? Kathy, will you lead us as we rise together? Each of you are invited to join us downstairs. You just follow down the stairs and there are treats available. I have not tested them this week, but I did see them getting ready, okay? So I would encourage you to join and meet each other around the tables this morning. And now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen.